Beautiful. Yeah. Out here on the Lake Canera, the Sea of Galilee. I'm going to talk to you for just a minute about one of my favorite, favorite stories. And it's Matthew chapter 14. Now, you will remember that the disciples were out fishing right here where we are on the Sea of Galilee. And a storm arose. And they were terrified. They were frightened. They feared for their lives, didn't they? And then they look and they see a man walking towards them on the water. And as he gets closer, they identify him. He is our, my Lord. He is that's Jesus walking towards them. Now, here's where the story really gets good. Peter leaps to his feet. Now, those fishing boats were not very big, you know, not even as big as this boat at all much smaller than this and they're out there and Peter leaps to his feet and as Jesus gets closer Peter always wanted to be like his teacher always wanted to be like his master and so he beckons to Christ to walk on the water and Christ says come now it, a careful reading in Matthew 14 <clears throat> reveals some um, very important details there had to be a moment there had to be a moment <clears throat> on the side of the boat the storm is going where Peter lit he's probably holding on to something and lifts up his leg come here Dan I'm gonna fall in the water so here's the railing and he lifts up his foot and he he's looking down at the water looking at the Savior and it's now he's actually going to step out the boat. What he said in Hebrew was "ouchy mama," <laughs> or something like that. I mean, he's thinking, "What am I doing?" But he kept his focus on the Savior. Thank you. I, there had to be that moment where absolute faith took over fear, and he stepped out of the boat. And then, as you read Matthew chapter 14, it says that he started to walk on the water, but he walked on the water when he kept his gaze, his focus on the Savior. But then we read, the wind is blowing, the waves are coming over the top, the spray is blowing in his face, and he gets distracted. And he's looking to his left, He's looking to his right. He takes his gaze off the Savior, and what happens? He starts to sink. Now, there's a critical word in this story. As he begins to sink, Matthew reports that Jesus immediately, and that's the word that's used, immediately grabbed him, and he pulled him in tight. I think pretty close close nose to nose and said Peter Peter why did you doubt me and you know that 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 gaze that stare and perhaps the unspoken thoughts were have I ever not delivered have I ever not come through have I ever done anything that would cause you to doubt me Peter why did you doubt me now, when we talk about this, at least my experience, when we talk about this story in Sunday school, we talk about Peter's lack of faith or his momentary uh, 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 faith crisis. I think Peter gets a really bad rap in this story. I really do. And this is why. Where were the other guys? <laughs> they were stuck in the corner of the boat, paralyzed by fear. But Peter got out of the boat. He did something that he had never done before. He was willing to, the Savior said, come. He stepped out of the boat and did something that people said you can't do. You can't walk on water. He got out of the boat. The others were paralyzed by fear. I suppose, Dan, that if 
the other disciples had gotten up and said, I want, I think he would have said, come, don't you? Mm -hmm. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. But they didn't. They never got on their feet. We have no record of it. They were paralyzed by fear. They were comfortable just sitting there, but Peter got out of the boat. Now, you know I always... Saints. Pardon me? They were good members of the church. They were good members of the church, <laughs> content to sleep on the back rows during sacrament meeting. <laughs> Have you been to our ward? <laughs> he said, have you been to my ward? Um, here, I always give you a takeaway. Here's the takeaway. What is one thing in your, our personal life, maybe one thing in our marriage, one thing in our family, one thing with our children or grandchildren. What is one thing that is amiss or needs to get better? It doesn't mean it's bad. What is one thing that you and I can step out of the boat on and do something really different, even something difficult, even something that people say, you can't do that. What is one thing that you and one thing that I really need to get out of our boat and do differently? Because I have learned that wishing, wanting, and hoping, nothing good ever comes from that. Good things come by doing. So as we listen to conference, as we read our scriptures, as we ponder uh, and, and reflect on what we feel, I promise you, that the Lord will reveal and inspire each one of us of something where we can get out of our boat and do it differently. Dan?